story number one, which is a really distressing one and something that, you know, you can't really make any jokes about, but it's really an, an illuminating view into what's happening in America now at the moment, um, in, you know, around COVID, around the lockdown, around the elections, around Orange Man Bad, around the lack of enthusiasm around Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Jesus, imagine that that was a fact. It's just a whole, it's a complete shit show in America, it seems like, right? Um, it's completely burned into the ground. And for the most part, if you're just watching the Democratic and Republic, and uh, Democratic and, um, yeah, Republic, right? Is that called Republic? What do you call them? Republic? Whatever they're called. Um, conventions, the RNC and the DNC conventions, you'd be somehow led to believe that everything's okay, right? That's the weird thing. It depends, again, what you look at. If you follow certain accounts, if you're following Andy Andy Ngo, Andy Ngo on Twitter, the, that guy that got um, milkshake back in the day and beaten up by Antifa, if you're following his account, America's burning, right? If you're following somebody else on there, I don't know, um, let's I don't know, throw someone out there, right? Or if you're following, uh, who's the guy that loves Trump? Or just Trump in general, everything is fine. Um, you know, the economy is going to come roaring back. Uh, employment is not low. You're sending out free checks. Just a complete mindfuck of a situation. You're not really sure what's down and what's up. But what we know for sure, what happened over the weekend was quite distressing where this guy or this kid, sorry, a teenager called Kyle Rittenhouse decided to um, leave his home, travel 15 miles or 15 minutes um, to another town in order to kind of stand up for the local businesses supposedly in Wisconsin and then something else transpired he somehow got involved in altercation with Antifa with some Black Lives Matter protests we don't know he got involved in some kind of altercation which then resulted in him shooting three people and then killing two right I think the other one is still in, in a serious uh, condition in hospital but it's quite crazy to see the backlash and what the kind of response has been from people I'm a big fan of the Revenge of the Sith guys, even though I think they can they can be a little bit um, obtuse in some of their points. Um, I still enjoy the show. I think um, they do provide some comic relief. Um, and for people that kind of occupy the right-hand side of the political debate, I do kind of enjoy their perspective. But it was really interesting to see how divided they were when it came to um, judging this situation or giving their impression or their views on it. And I think for for the most part, was it Royce for the most part was saying that how he feels as if this situation is happening in America now was going to come to a head eventually. Um, people are going to have enough of the reckless abandon that the politicians have left their states in and people are going to demand law and order. They're going to demand a return to civility, whether it required guns or violence, something was going to give. And I guess this was one of them, right? And then on Mersh's side, he was saying, which I kind of agree with, that you can't take it upon yourself to go and play vigilante, to go play Batman, to go and restore order. Mm -hmm. Because when the tables do turn or when eventually the situation does get worse or get even you know, than what it is, no one's going to be around to protect you. And then he also made a point about he feels like the cheerleaders online, the people who are kind of christening this Kyle dude, a, a hero won't be there for him when he eventually does get put into prison or gets a suspended sentence or has his life completely thrown away. They're not going to be there to support him and make sure that he's okay, which is a fairly accurate point too. But it's pretty easy, I think, from what's been told in the story so far to come to the conclusion that Kyle Rittenhouse should have been nowhere near where this protest was going. He purposely involved himself in the situation. This is no different to when we get annoyed when we see videos of Karens turning up to protest and blocking doors and like that lady. Remember the lady that put herself in harm's way on purpose? She was in like a mobility scooter and people were piling onto her, covering her in paint, spraying her with a fire extinguisher. And you kind of got the impression that she kind of wanted her five minutes and five she wanted her five minutes of fame and she got it. She went to be viral. Um nothing really came of that situation. But putting but purposely putting yourself in harm's way makes no sense, especially when a mob is banged for blood. Nobody is safe. We've seen many businesses go in flames in America that have signs of Black Lives Matter in solidarity, standing with you. And, you know, the, the quintessential one is the one in Wisconsin, right? The car lot that had the Black Lives Matter sign and the whole lot was on fire. It doesn't matter when people are in a frenzy, when people are angry, um, broke disillusioned they're going to act out in ways that don't make really much sense so for you to go there and put yourself in harm's way with a gun to try and res restore civility makes absolutely no sense especially for a teenager it doesn't make any sense whatsoever anyone that's encouraging it is an absolute idiot and again it's just unfortunate 
that this situation arised. Most likely, he's not going to get charged for murder one. I don't think that's a bit extreme. I do think there's an element that he could be argued. If you've got a really good lawyer, they could definitely argue that he was defending himself because if you look at the video, it did look like he was defending himself. There was a mob chasing him and he was trying to get, he was trying to go to help. This was, of course, after he shot somebody in the head, don't get me wrong, but he was obviously trying to go and surrender himself to the police in order to kind of get help and to um, make sure that he didn't get crushed by the boot of somebody's shoe. Um, or by the soul of somebody's shoe. Sorry, it's an article here from BBC. It says, Kyle Rittenhouse, who is a US teen accused of the Wisconsin protest murderers. Um, after a black man was shot seven times in the back by a police officer in, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, on Sunday, the 23rd of August, people angry about police uh, violence began protesting. One of the on the third night of demonstration, a 17 year old boy allegedly fired a protesters with a military style semi automatic rifle, killing two and so shooting the third. The, the gun thing, I don't have really, but that's the issue too. The semi automatic rifle thing, I don't know how you judge in America. I'm not an American, but I would imagine if you are pro gun, right? So if you're if, if you allow people to bear arms, I don't see how you can then delineate between what is what is allowed to what you're allowed to own and what you're not allowed to own maybe there's a quantity or of, of one something you're not allowed to own but this idea that they're kind of demonizing semi-automatic weapons as if this is the reason why people go crazy is nuts the kid is a nutcase the kid is obviously um have he has some kind of conviction that led him to go there but i don't think it's anything to do with a gun the gun wasn't talking to him let's, let's just get that right on wednesday he was arrested at his mother's home in antioch at illinois how did he get home from shooting like and again this is weird he somehow he got home as well this is again this is the issue people have with all this stuff in america right supposedly we didn't we didn't see it allegedly the the, the um who, what's his name is it jacob kyle what's his name the guy that got shot um the black guy that got shot right allegedly he was trying to reach for a knife or a gun in his car don't get me wrong he shouldn't have gone back to his car after the police were trying to arrest him right you should obviously surrender yourself to the police and be as corruptive as you can right especially in the in america the consequences are just far too uh, bleak for you to do anything else but we didn't even see the knife or the gun that he supposedly had this guy was seeing him kind of running down the street with a semi-automatic semi -automa semi weapon sorry it's not some handgun you can't hide it under you know in your sock you can't hide it in your belt loop it's pretty obvious you've got a gun in your hand and somehow you got home and then you got arrested um a day later, he was charged with one count of first degree intentional homicide and one count of first degree reckless, reckless homicide. Videos indicate he was spent hours in Tuesday apparently helping patrol the streets. He told journalists that he was his job to guard the buildings and even offer medical assistance to protesters. Again, this is no different to Karens, man. This is like a gun Karen. This is no different. When you see those people that stand outside their door and they ask a, usually a minority person, hey, do you live here? I've never seen you around. Tell me who your house you're going up to. What's your door number? All this stupid policing of your neighbors, right? This kind of tittle-tattle, snitchy, looking out of your window blinds, calling people, making like... Th th this is basically what's led to this. And now you've got this kid who went to the extreme, of course. Uh, videos indicate he spent hours of Tuesday the day apparently help patrol. Um, here's what we know so far. Details are still emerging about Carl Rittenhouse, but his social media profiles show a fascinating pro uh, fascination with police dating back several years. No problem with that whatsoever. I think, again, this demonization of the police is really strange uh, because, you know, if somebody, God forbid, in your family was to get raped, who would you call? The police. So this idea that we don't need police and we could do away with them is ridiculous to say the least. But there, obviously there is an issue, especially in America, with some kind of um, institutional racism. There has to be. There's no way that this kid could go home and the other guy couldn't even get something out of his car. It doesn't make any sense. Um, of course, both are in the wrong, but come on. A Facebook photo of him was framed with, black, with the Blue Lives Matter logo, a staunchly pro-police movement that often clashes with Black Lives Matter supporters. Again, whatever, he's 17, right? Um, you're going to, I don't know, when you're 17, I, I guess... I wouldn't have done it, but I understand if you're a teenager and you want to cause a reaction, you're going to wear a MAGA hat, you're going to be into Blue Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, you're going to, you know, you're going to be a bit of a, you're going to be a bit of a cunt online. I can imagine that would be the case. So you can't read in too much of that again. Several of his posts honor police officers killed on duty and he also posted pictures of himself wearing full police uniform. He is a former member of the local council, local police cadet program, Grayscale Police Department. Jesus, this kid really wanted to be a police officer, isn't it? Um, guns are another of his passion, photo show sure, imposing with weapons, no problem with that. One that occur, charges brought against him is possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under eight. Okay, cool. That's I guess that's the issue because he's under 18. But I'm pretty sure in rural parts of America, kids 
kids know how to use guns they know how to drive like let's not kid ourselves right in an interview on tuesday night before the shootings he echoes the police language when telling a journalist why he's armed he says part of my job is also to protect people if someone's hurt i'm running into harm's way yeah all right mate um he's captured on video at different times during that night at one point he speaks to police who are from water later on he is shown being pursued pursued by a group of people one of whom appears to fire into the air the teenager turns to see where the sound is coming from as another person tries to attack him at one point a teenager appears to shoot the man later identified as joseph Ras uh, rosenbaum i think that was the white guy that was dropping the n-bombs in it that was a weird one because of course now looking at the story he obviously heard a gunshot then he turned around and got kind of startled and assumed the guy that fired it was a dude with the bandana across his face which it wasn't so i guess that was the issue the fact that he was getting attacked by somebody with a shopping bag or something i don't know what he had in his hand and he decided to shoot them that's insane, right? Again, I'm not too sure if that's allowed in America. I'm not sure how, if that's how self-defense laws work. But if somebody, if you're allowed to shoot somebody because they charge at you with a shopping bag, that country is like about to burn to the ground. Uh, fleeing momentarily, he finds himself chased by a crowd before falling to the ground and firing his gun. One of those hit by the gunfire falls to the ground, fatally injured. He is later named as Anthony Hubbard. That's the guy with the skateboard, didn't it? I tried it. Again, don't try it. It's like what? Don't bring a knife, a spoon to a knife to a gunfight why are you hitting some guy with a skateboard that's got a gun in his hand insane insane and there's a part of me that thinks you know what right like okay people died right but can we really say honestly that the people that were tracking him were just going to beat him up do you think they would just left it at that i don't think so have you seen those videos of people getting booted in the head when they're just lying on a or i don't know like that guy that supposed that drove into a crowd he, his car crashes and some kid just boots him to the side of the face um you know behind his back sorry and he's completely unconscious we've seen obviously the other account of that unfortunately that african the older african-american gentleman that got pushed to the ground and hit his head and died like they're quite violent right these this, this i don't know if you call them call them a fire left whatever they are they're not a, they're not a peaceful group so if they saw the gun and they got triggered from the gun that we it's safe to assume that when they were trying to um rush him on the floor that they weren't just going to kick him in the head and keep him moving they definitely were going to stomp him out until maybe he's you know his lights completely switched off so there is a part of me that's like you can't really charge somebody for murder if legitimately if that if that in that scenario i'm sure his lawyers could prove there's been other scenarios that kind of are similar where the person has you know been very close to getting beaten to death um and again just so unfortunate man like you're going with the escape to a protest and suddenly you end up dead because you're just chasing some 17 year old with a semi-automatic weapon it's like god man another person runs away apparently injured many shots are heard during the incident yeah that's a guy that's got half his half his arm has essentially been blown off um according to the new york times a person who runs away injured is carrying a handgun he definitely was and cbs chicago quotes prosecutors are saying he injured the man appeared to have a handgun in his right hand when he was shot after the second shooting, Kyle Rittenhouse heads towards police vans with his arms in air. A bystander shouts, that dude just shot them, but the police vehicles pass by to attend the injured protesters. Who were the victims? Rosenberg, 36, was from Ken Kenosha, and Mr. Hubba, 26, was from Silver Lake. Again, RIP to those guys. Thoughts and feelings go out to their family and friends. <sighs> Such needless death, man. Needless. It's just horrendous, isn't it? Regard regardless of what the situation is, like, God almighty, especially in the midst of everything that's going on, everyone's got enough troubles everyone's going through enough as it is already to be dealing with a loss of a family member or a loved one due to a protest it's just oh yeah, yeah they were on kenosha streets on a tense night that saw protesters clash with police and armed vigilantes demonstrators are angry about the police shooting uh, of a black man a black american weeks after the u.s was engulfed in a huge movement calling for an end of racism and police brutality jacob blake 29 was shot seven times in the back by officers his lawyer says it'll be a miracle if he walks again jesus christ limited law enforcement in kenosha has led to individuals and groups taking law into their own hands during the arrest a spokesman of wisconsin police chief said so i wonder what that's about why is why is it limited police um presence during a full-blown riot when your city's burning why is that is that because the police are afraid of getting involved in, in conflict and causing more drama is it because they're understaffed is it because they've been told by the mayor and wherever it is to stand down like why wouldn't the police actually be trying to enforce law and order trying to keep keep some semblance of peace maybe trying to make some places no-go areas wherever it may be maybe try to um push their protesters to a certain certain area of kenosha where they can protest in peace and you know whatever keep them away from some of the other people on the other side it's really interesting i wonder if you're in america let me know like why aren't there police on the streets well like why shouldn't they try to like it's the complete opposite of what they did in new york in it when they were protesting there it just felt like there were police everywhere um 
What are the alleged shooters connection to Donald Trump? Why are they asking this again? This is again so insane. The suspect's social media account suggests the support of President Donald Trump. Video show him cheering in front of a row of Ira Riley for the president's re-election. But who cares? It doesn't matter really, innit? This is just a heinous situation all in. Again, I won't read the whole thing. Let me know what your thoughts are below if you're now in America. Terrible situation for everybody involved, man. Like, ugh. I mean, honestly, I, I can't imagine what it is to go through something like this, especially in the midst of COVID and lockdown and the economy essentially flatlining. Like, this is not what you need, man. But again, what do I know?